anything like this happen up here before. Right. So this is a this was a big thing, you know. I'm Hi guys, welcome to Off Grid with Whiskey and Sunshine. I'm Shelly. I'm Scott. And today we wanted to talk about uh, some information that we gathered from a recent incident event. that happened. Yeah. An event, a serious, tragic event. It's been about a month. There was a major event that happened not too far from here, I'd say probably 30 miles, yeah. give or take. Yeah. Uh, we live out in the woods, obviously we're off grid. Several towns are close to us within like a 15 mile range. And then when you get out a little further, we're actually getting into the area where you could get something that you might consider a city. Well, they call them the Twin Cities together because it's Lewiston and Auburn. Right. Um, if you want to know exactly what happened and all the, all the dirty details, uh, just Google uh, Lewiston Strong or uh, Lewiston Shooting, and you can do all of that yourself. We're not going to get into all that. That's Yeah, we're not here to talk about what happened with that incident as far as the actual event. Right. He did unalive 18 people, uh, injured 13. 13 people, and that was a terrible, terrible thing. The, the biggest problem was that unlike most of these guys, he didn't off himself at one of the scenes. He took off and they had a huge manhunt that went on three what, days, three, days, three, three days, four days. Nobody knew where he was. All they knew that he right. was armed and dangerous. And uh, so things changed in this area for a yeah. little while. Yeah. And uh, not really the way we thought. I mean, I didn't expect it to uh, affect us up here as much as it did. It, it's only like secondary effects, but it's stuff you might not think about yeah. that we noticed. So yeah. we thought maybe we'd pass that stuff along to you. Right. So with him being gone or not being found for three days, nobody knew where he was. He had weapons and or we assumed he was dangerous. He had weapons um, He had, uh, and he had military training. He was... Somewhat. That's under, yeah. you know, that's under scrutiny. I don't know. Speculative. Yeah. Of right. Information is always cloudy as it goes right. on. It well, that's why up. we didn't want to talk about right. the, that actual incident. We're not really here to do that. We're, we wanted to talk more about the effects that we felt and saw from what was happening. Right. From the beginning. Because, obviously, we wanted to get online. Find out what was going find on. find out what was going on. That's right. Not thinking that our internet access and our access to the news was restricted. Um, I don't know how much of it was intentional and how much of it may have happened because of the major news feeds taking over the, the internet for their own news purposes. Right. I don't know, and I can't get a straight answer out of anybody. Uh, of course, you never would anyway. Right. But I can tell you what did not work. Um, even here off the grid, we rely on our cell phones a lot, and uh, a lot of times, instead of listening to the regular radio, I'll listen to an app on my phone for that radio station. All of the apps for all of the local radio stations, dead. Totally dead. No info at all. Uh, we don't have local broadcast TV here. I mean, they do. It's here, but we, we don't have it. Um, if we had a... That might have worked. I haven't heard anybody say that it didn't. Yeah. So that is a possibility. But uh, the radio stations were seriously choked down. Uh, social media, eventually, that the, the only way we heard about anything at all was on social media. And eventually they choked social media down. And I was able to talk to a friend of mine who had a scanner who was listening to the whole thing. And he was able to send me messages to tell me updates. Right. But other than that, uh, the closer, it almost seems like the closer you were to the situation, the less you knew. Right. Because uh, now uh, we have family that lives another 10 miles closer. And they actually got alerts on their phone to shelter in place. Right. Uh, the whole area down around where it happened in the Twin Cities was on lockdown. All the businesses were closed and shuttered. They if, sent you, if you were in Walmart... They closed the doors at Walmart, and you were stuck inside until they figured out where. Until the or, situation or, stabilized. Yeah, until yeah. yeah, until they knew what was. It happening. was late at night before they actually even let people leave Walmart and the grocery stores and stuff. Right. So yeah, a lot of that happened. Uh, so people were stuck places. Right. Where they didn't necessarily want to be. That was a problem. The flow of information. 
Well, it's awful hard to know what's going on if there's no information flowing, but... We had a lot of news stations up here. They yeah. They were all up here. Yeah. Yeah, there was... And they were putting it out, but we couldn't get it the, because they were using up, I think, is what happened, is they were using Killing up the bandwidth or the something. The bandwidth. Yeah. I, and there was a lot of news that was not correct. Yeah, there was a lot of... I won't call it fake news, but there was a lot of mo no, news that was misreported. That. Yes. There was a lot going on, and... And it was getting reported as all the same. Different events were getting yes, lumped in, and thing. everything was. We never had anything like this happen up, up here before. Right. So this is a this was a big thing, you know. I mean, right. Maine's got a lot of guns. You you think it would be violent? <laughs> it's really not. Not really. No, I mean our crime rate is ridiculously right. low. But. So that first night, it was all about the information and people getting kind of locked down and sheltered in place. One other interesting thing about Lewiston and Auburn is it's a central main located city. Because of that, almost everything goes through there. Uh, the mail, everything goes through that hub for this area. It is a hub. So now all of that stuff got closed and we went out Okay, that three happened days. Three yeah, days. I guess three days later. Because it was three days that he was missing and nobody knew where he was. So for three days, things were either limited open or just for during the day, right. not at night. Or it was just closed right down depending on what it was. Right. Uh, a lot of the warehouses and things like that were just closed right down. And so they couldn't accept trucks in, nor could they send trucks out. Correct which interrupted the flow of mail, groceries, food. You, so as we were getting supplies. towards the end of this three days, four days, whatever it was, we decided we were going to take a trip to our local grocery store, which is still a good 20 miles north of where this happened. But what we didn't expect was when we got down there into town, it was a total mob scene. Yeah, and it fast, was a total mob fast. scene because all the places that had closed further south, like the Walmarts and all those places, they actually put signs up directing those people to come up here and do their shopping. Yeah. It, like you were saying, it reminded somebody of the, the COVID shopping fiasco. Yeah. It was yeah. kind of, people were... People are scared, and it's they do crazy something. things when they're scared. Yeah, and it's just something you wouldn't think about. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't think about... When, when you're told to, to stay in place or, or stay home, for some reason I was thinking people would stay home. And they didn't. They needed food, groceries. It was a, you know. Oh, I think a lot of them stayed home for the first day or so. Well, right. But it, there was an there issue. Was, they and, also were pushing the, the narrative pretty hard that they thought that there was nothing to worry about up here. So they tried their best to get right. everything back to normal. Right. They tried to this narrow area. down where this person was that did all this um, and keep keep things narrowed down. But for a while, it was a wider range. Yeah. So yeah, it's it was, just, just something we didn't think about. When we finally did go in the stores, there was a lot sold out. The yeah, bread was sold out. Was, I mean, there yeah. was just a lot because we weren't used to having that much volume of, of traffic yeah that much of an influx of people so even if they um, only bought a little bit of stuff there was probably four or five times as many people as normally goes to that store right you right. know so so if this had gone on any longer it would have been it would have been even worse quite a problem if they had yeah. opened up the warehouses and got the trucks moving and it's i mean and, and yeah you you think you know well that's no big deal this is, you know it's a local thing but i think it was jack spirico that always said uh all the events that you prepare for, the big movie of the week events are the ones that are least likely to happen. It's yeah. going to be the little things like this that really screw with you. And and it it really did screw with a lot of people. My brother-in-law couldn't get parts for his tractor. Right. He drove all the way down there to the dealership that was on the edge of the, of the uh, incident, incident the zone thing. or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And that place was, that place was locked up tighter than it could be. So, I mean, you know, you don't think of how it's going to affect you. Uh, and I guess my my first thought was, you know, have that stuff at home. Always you, you should anyway. But mm -hmm. think about the people that got stuck in office buildings or uh, in the store. Of course, there's lots of food to eat in there, so they probably Yeah, but they the go people hungry. that were closer to it that had, you know, were in their homes 
you know, curtains closed, doors yeah. locked, and sitting there with their kids going, now what do we do? I you bet know? it was impossible to get takeout. Yeah, nothing I mean, was if you open. think about it, yeah, nothing was open, and the damn sure wasn't anybody delivering. Right. But uh, right. it's just something to think about. It's another thing. And there were weird dynamics to it that we didn't expect. It was just odd. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I never would have thought that it would have affected us that way mm -hmm. up here. Things I didn't see. Now, you would think, you know, armed psycho out on the loose. He's already, a, you know, confirmed murderer, uh, mass murderer. And when we did go to the stores, I was surprised at the lack of firearms. Back, oh, back yeah. during the whole well, COVID thing. That you could see. That you could see. That's that's right. a very good that's right. a very good point. I was getting to that. Now back during the whole COVID thing, when that was really getting ramped up, I can remember going into stores and seeing anywhere from ten to a dozen people wearing holsters. And I mean it doesn't bother me. I I'm not saying I wasn't carrying two, but I don't wear one out where everybody can see it. So I mean maybe there were people just as many people were carrying maybe the, you know, Maybe they just were carrying concealed. I, right. I don't know. But I figured it was going to look like uh, Mogadishu out there when you got nutcases running around with guns. Mm -hmm. like, it's just no no telling what's going to happen. What a good case for having your bug out bag in your vehicle, huh? Right. Or even just, you know, the bug out bucket, the good buckets that we talked about that have food in them. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't need a bug out bag, but... If you got a big trunk in your car, why not? Why not throw a cheap stove, you know, in in a bucket and get a bunch of like those uh, mountain house meals, stuff that'll store. You don't have to worry about it. I guarantee you, if you if you can get to your car and you got you know eight or ten of those meals, a, a little stove in there, and a, access to water, you will be the hero of your workplace. I guarantee you. Yeah, uh, it, we have a lot of new subscribers too, so. If you haven't seen it, I'll put links down to a few of those videos that we've done. We had a bucket that was like 13 years old, I think, that we had in one of our vehicles that we had packed with essentials in case something were to happen. And we unpacked it for you to show you what it what was in it. We cooked something out of it. Yep. And then we repacked. There's another video of us repacking and putting some different things in what we would do differently now as opposed to 13 years ago which may even change again i'm thinking about repacking that bucket we actually uh at the time we made one for our daughter who mm -hmm. was in college at the time and she had one in her vehicle now if that's it's been years and years now she's a mother and a wife and a homeowner and she's her whole perspective has totally changed mm -hmm. so i thought it'd be kind of fun to open her bucket up and see what was in that that she put in it. It's almost like a little time capsule. Yep. Now, a lot of that food, that's still going to be good. That's Mountain House food. It's been stored in a vacuum all this time. I'm not worried about it. Most of that's going right back in. Usually, we'll take one meal, eat it, make sure it's still edible, say, yep, yeah, still good. You know, buy another one to replace it and repack it. But, I mean, it's the incidentals you don't think about. Like, uh, a teenage girl going to college is going to have much different stuff than now uh, she's the mother of a five-year-old. <laughs> Probably going to be some different stuff. Sure. I don't know. Maybe, snacks maybe not. snacks. Yeah. <laughs> a five-year-old likes snacks. Teenagers like snacks. But it's not just about eating, too. You know? Oh, I no, mean, absolutely. It, 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 right. it's, it would be nice to have something in there. Nice lighter. Uh, yeah, you know. lighters are definite. I mean, even if you had even like a stove, uh, you know, you may want a little small one of those. Little right, stoves. you can get you can get one of the little uh, regular gas stoves that you know hook onto the cartridges or the the propane butane stoves like yeah. we use. Yeah. Uh, they have the little small Coleman stoves that use the liquid fuel. And again, we've done videos on on how Most we of this use stuff. those and cook with them. So we'll put that down in the description so you can you check know, them out. Uh, but. Those are always fun, and it's good to kind of drag them out and learn how to relearn how to use them again right, and, and right. get a feel for it. So when it, if something does happen, then we're ready. Well, I think it was, and it, it's the same for everything, really. It's not just firearms training, but uh, Masada Ayub, one of the greatest firearms trainers in the world, and his statement is when something actually happens, you 
always revert to your lowest level of training. <laughs> Meaning a lot of the fancy stuff you learn is going to go right out the window. The basics are going to be there. I think everybody should know how to cook and prepare food on the tailgate of a truck. I mean, even if you don't have a stove and you've, you've got canned food, there are ways you can do it. But it's still nice to brush up on that stuff. Right. It and still is. More often than not, we're not going to be out in the middle of the woods needing to cook a meal. I mean, maybe if you camp a lot. But more often than not, like I'm looking out the window right now and it's coming down <laughs> snowing. We're supposed to get snow tonight quite a bit. What I'm trying to say is that more often than not, it's going to be because you lost power is why you're going to use your bucket, your bag, your little stove. If you don't have a generator or have backup cookware, cook lighting. utensils, whatever, and lighting, uh, you're going to want to use something like that. And Never more... forget the entertainment either. If you've got kitties, you know those. Yeah. You can go to the store. You can buy those little battery-operated games. They only play like one or two games. Buy a couple of them, leave the batteries out, dig them in your bucket, throw batteries in there for them. Mm -hmm. That'll make a bored kid... It'll give them something to do, and it'll, it's one less thing you got to worry about. Yeah, depending on their age. Deck of cards, yeah, you cards. Need, you know, a book. Yeah, color and book crayons. You don't realize how stressed you are. You think you're not until you get into a situation where there's other people around, and you realize it's pretty high stress, highly stressful situation. And you're around a lot of It's not just you. Because you're looking at everybody. And, and everybody else is in the same boat. Absolutely. They're... they're They've had their screws turned a bit too. So, yes. you know, I thought people held it together pretty well. I didn't see anybody, you know, flipping out or fighting. Uh, and it could easily happen. I mean, because people were tuned up. Yeah. Yeah. You could feel it. You could feel the tension. Uh, and again, we're talking about this because we've never been through something like this. This state has not had this happen. Um, we see it all the time in other states, and it's terrible, but we don't hear about the after effects and what happens during all that. Well, that and I think ours was weird because it, it lasted three days. Right, a lot of times. Because we didn't know where the guy was. We knew he was yeah. somewhere right here local, but he could have been anywhere. Yeah, a lot of times it's taken care of. And uh, usually with these mass shootings and stuff, it's like within a couple hours... There's no threat to the population anymore, and it's more or less business as usual. But right. Right. three or four days is a long time to stop the tractor trailers from rolling into these hubs. And but uh, it it really it really put the the kibosh to a lot of stuff. Yeah. So we just wanted to put that information out there for you guys to kind of ponder over and think about, and and think about maybe if you don't have a bucket or a bag or something that storage you have, tub with you, whatever Anything. whatever works for you because for you. and you put in it what works best for you and you you're, you're going to change it you're going to put it together and then you're going to go you know I don't really need that but I could use this and it, it's not a, a one and done deal you're going to be tweaking it all the time if you do it right you know you constantly modify it all the time you right. know and the seasons change and Correct. what you may need and things like that so if you have any questions let us know down in the comments we'll be glad to answer any questions that we can well thanks for joining us we appreciate you watching and we will see you next time Bye.